Hello guys and welcome to my series of 7 days to die, how to do everything. In this uh, series I am going to explain you how you can add new prefabs. Prefabs are buildings that you can loot in the world. As well as how to change recipes or add new recipes. As well as everything that has to do with the, with the game itself. How to uh, survive the first day how to forge stuff and stuff like this. Um, of course, the game is still in alpha, so everything that I'm right now saying may change in the future. But yeah, uh, so the alpha right now is 11.5 and alpha 12 is not ga going to change the whole game completely. So the basics that I'm right now explaining um, are still going to be... Um, viable. I'm going to explain it as easy as I can so even guys who have no computer knowledge at all will be able to um, yeah, achieve everything that ev uh, everyone else does. So, and then the first ep uh, and yeah, the episodes are uh, sometimes a little bit longer, some sometimes really just I don't know, like two or three minutes long because I don't know, explaining how to con uh, connect to uh, to an F um, FTP server. This is what I'm going to do right now. Um, won't take too long, but yeah, as I said, I'm going to explain everything, so I have to start over there. So um, yeah, the first thing that you will need is FileZilla. So you open your browser as I have already. Then you're typing in FileZilla. You can of course use any other um, f uh, what is it uh, FTP program as well, but I am going for FileZilla because it is more or less the easiest. Um, that is the uh, if you don't want to open your browser or stuff like this, uh, then I'm going to put down this link here that I'm right now clicking into the description of this video, so you could just download it from there. So, download FileZilla server. No, we don't want to have a server. Uh, we want to have the client, so we click on this one here. Then we have to decide it Windows 64-bit or 32, even though it already selects 64-bit uh, because it already recognizes that, one, that my computer is running on a 64-bit. If you don't know if you have 64 or 32, you can uh, easily um, figure that out. Um, just go onto your desktop, if you have that. Some uh, c computers don't have it, like mine, because I don't need it. Um, then there is the, the computer, so I'm going to show you that. Um, okay, there we go. So this small little icon here is usually on the desktop as well. If you don't have that, then just um, hold the Windows button and uh, um, hit the E button. And then this this window will show up. So if you see, oh, I can do that plenty of times, and then I have like twenty windows opened. So what do we just need one? So let me close the other ones. So as soon as you have that, right click on the this PC, then go to properties, and then this uh, thing will show up. So with all, with all your information about your processor, installed memory, and so on and so on. And this line here, system type, is the information that you need. So 64-bit operating system, 64 base processor. So as I said, uh, yeah, if you have a 32-bit um, operating system, it will just so show 32. So that's it. This is how you figure that out. So then you click on download now, go to source source forge. Um, click on download. And as you can see it is downloading. Of course I already have it installed, so just go through the installation process like with every uh, other um, program as well. As soon as you have that, you open FileZilla and then you have this one here. So, uh, the next step that you want to do is click on the little button here where the two computers are and there's uh, yeah, the, the globe in the background. And then there should be my sites. In my case, I, ha I already have a new site, so this shouldn't be there because this is uh, my server already. So you just have the my sites. Then click new site. Name it whatever you want to. I don't know. I'm going with seven days to die server. And yeah, if you have a, s a server already from uh, yeah the different kind of uh, companies, I'm not going to mention any at all. 
Um, because, yeah, I'm not doing some adv advertisement for them. Um, so my host is Hydrox.tv. So all this information that I'm right now typing in there are... Um, yeah, you have to get them from your from the company you uh, have the server from. Uh, usually the port is 21. If the port is 21, you can uh, leave that empty. Also, uh, uh, that's what I will. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. And you need to change the logon type from anonymous to normal. And then you have your username and your password. Um, unfortunately, I don't know my username right now. Let's take a look. Okay, so it's Hydrox. As I said, all these information, so the host, the port, the user, and the password, you get from the company where you are renting the server from. So, the my username is this, and my password should be, I think, this. Um... I'm going to try to connect now. I hope this is the password actually. No, there we go. So, uh, actually, this is quite good. So, if you uh, put down uh, the wrong uh, password, then it says 530 login or password incorrect. So, then you go back to the uh, double computers with the globe, click on your 7 days to die server, and change the password. Now, I need to figure out what my password is actually. That's quite bad. Ah, I think I know. Uh, I should have prepared that a little bit better. There we go. So, and as soon as you uh, have connected, you see that yeah, there's plenty of spam. Don't care about it. As soon as it says um, director list listing successful, and you have something like seven days to die server or something. Uh, on this on this uh, side here, so this these ones here. So we have, as you can see, one server, two, three, four, five, six, plus some other folders. But usually you just have like one folder with I don't know seven days to die server, and that's it. And if you double click on it, then you see all the stuff that is usually in there. Uh, unfortunately, this is the wrong server. Let me show you the right one. Yeah, this is how it should look like. It could be a little bit different. Uh, we have some more uh, bad files and stuff uh, like this in there that you don't have. But usually it should look similar like this. And that's it already. So um, for that's for the uh, server side. If you want to change the recipes, the prefabs on your own client, then you have to do something else. So then you need to double click on Steam. So you have the library open. Click on 7 days to die and click, uh, do a right click on it, go to properties, go to local files and then click on browse, browse local files. And this is the same data as you can see as it is over here. So 7 days to die, underscore data, uh, app cache, config, data, uh, all of this stuff. Okay, uh, the app cache is not there, but seven days to die data data easy anti-cheat and all that stuff is here So yeah, that's it already for episode number one as I said uh, some are pretty short just explaining how the basics of computing works In the next episode, I'm going to explain how you can add new recipes. Thanks for watching Don't forget to subscribe and like if I help you out with this and see you in the next episode